Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a Moco Lesney number 59A Ford 300E Singer van. Uh, I came across this model uh, on eBay a few months back, and uh, I think I paid about $5 for this piece, including shipping. Um, as you can see, uh, the reason I got such a good deal on it is it is not in great shape. Uh, most of the original paint on this model is gone. It's sitting at kind of a weird angle. Um, I think it's you know probably been stepped on or crushed in some way uh, that has bent the, the original base on it. Um, but these are the perfect model candidates for a restoration. Uh, so I picked it up and we are going to do a traditional, all original uh, restoration on this model. Um, along with a, a couple new fixes, some things that I haven't had to encounter or attempt before. So taking a look at this model, uh, the most obvious and, and biggest fix that I need to do on this is the repair of where this casting is broken on the back end. Um, the little slot where the tab on the base fits in is broken. This uh, base is very loose and just pops right off of the original casting um, without drilling or, or tapping that rivet at all. Um, I'm not really sure what the best approach is going to be uh, to fix this, but I've got a couple ideas. And so uh, I'm going to start with the first one. Um, and I've seen several other restorers uh, use JB Weld on castings to either repair uh, defects, cracks, breaks. Uh, I've used it somewhat successfully in the past on earlier models. And uh, this is a very narrow uh, piece of the casting. And so um, I think that's going to be the, the first method that I'm going to attempt. Um, the reason I'm doing this first before I've strip the casting or anything else is uh, I, I'm not sure it's going to work. And uh, I, I thought, you know, I may as well go ahead and start with this. Uh, we'll try it out. We'll see if it works. If it does, then I can go ahead and strip the model and make the repairs, do the casting. If it doesn't work, uh, you know, I'm not out anything and I can try something else or start over. So what I've done is a placed a little bit of electrical tape around the base. Um, and that's just so that the, the JB Weld, when I apply it, doesn't stick to the base. And I'm going to use that tab uh, as my spacer or, or placeholder in there. And I'm hoping that the thickness of the tape will give me just enough clearance after this is repaired. So my plan is to goop a little of this JB Weld across the back end of the upper casting where it's broken, um, let that dry, and then I'll remove the base and the tape, and hopefully I'll have a perfectly sized new slot on the back end of my upper casting. Uh, JB Weld's fairly easy to work with. It's a, a two-part uh, epoxy, it's supposed to be as strong as steel although my personal results in that have been mixed at best when I've used it in the past. Um, but we're going to give it a shot here. It's very easy to mix up. It uh, comes in two parts, a black and a white, and uh, you mix equal parts together, get it good and stirred, uh, well, well blended, um, and then you just apply it and let it dry. And so that's what we're going to do here. Um, I want to make sure that I get pretty good coverage all the way across the slot here in the back. I um, want to make sure that it stays on the tape on the, the base casting. Um, and I, I usually try to over apply it just a little bit. I want to get a little bit more than I need because the JB Weld is sandable. Um, I, can, I can shape it, sand it, file it. Um, and so I'd rather have more than I need in there. A little bit too much is fine because I can always uh, shape it with my, my files or my Dremel afterwards. So we're going to go ahead and get this all applied, 
And then I usually, even though I use the quick setting JB Weld, I usually like to leave it to set at least a day uh, to really harden up uh, fully and cure. So we're gonna get this applied and then I will let it sit overnight and we'll come back to it and see what we got. So we've let our JB Weld repair uh, cure out over overnight, um, a little over 20 hours or so. And I'm just taking a nail file, one of my little sanding boards here, and trying to shape the bottom end of the, the overage, uh, the extra JB Weld that we put on there. Um, trying to get it to look as close to the original casting as possible uh, before I attempt to remove the base. Uh, now again, this is a trial. I've never tried uh, repair like this, and I don't really know if it's going to work. Um, I'm I'm trying to remove the base here, and I can tell that there's a little pole where that tab uh, fits through. So I'm trying to peel back a little of the electrical tape uh, just to loosen that up and see if I can work the base out while leaving that repair intact on the upper casting. Um, and what I'm finding is that the JB Weld is just too soft. Um, there's, there's not enough of it there. Every time I tug on it, it just breaks loose. So the attempt to repair with JB Weld on its own or by itself was a total failure. Uh, I think I'm going to have to have some other type of reinforcement in there. And so uh, I'm going back to a method I've used before and that is a little piece of piano wire. If you remember the restoration that we did on the canteen model uh, where the tow hook was busted, um, I used a little piece of piano wire and reinforced it with JB Weld on the casting. And that seemed to work pretty well. Um, I know it's going to end up adding a little bit more to the bottom of this casting, uh, but I'm hoping that overall, in, uh, in the final product, it's not uh, terribly noticeable. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm matching up this piece of piano wire to the curves and the bends on the bottom of the casting. Uh, I want to try to match it as close to the original body lines as I can. And uh, not using any special tools or methods, just my little pair of needle nose pliers. Um, and just marking it with my fingers. But uh, you do want to be very careful. When you're working with piano wire, the, the grain structure in it, um, it's really meant to, to hold straight. Um, it does not respond well uh, to multiple bends and uh, the steel can get very brittle and crack uh, if you manipulate it too much. Um, and so I want to make sure that when I make one of these bends that I've really got it in the spot where I want it uh, because it's not very forgiving to work with. So I want to make my bend, do it once, do it in exactly the right spot, um, and then we'll check our fit here against our base. And that looks pretty darn good. Um, I think we're, we're matched up almost exact on those body lines. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this off, uh, get it shortened up, and we'll get it stuck on our car. So with our piece cut and 
dry fit it up to our casting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit more of the JB Weld here. Uh, same method as before. And we'll see if uh, we can get, with the reinforcement of the piano wire in there, we'll see if we can get it to stick this time. So on our second attempt at repairing this uh, broken tab slot here at the end of our casting, um, I went ahead and I left this for a couple of days. Um, I, I felt just sort of as soft as the JB Weld was still on the first one. Um, and going back and reading the package, it said it you know did take a couple of days to reach full hardness. So. This one I let sit the full couple of days. Uh, so hopefully that uh, JB Weld is completely cured out and at, at full strength at this point. Um, you'll notice here inside of the, the rear wheel wells where there's a little bit of the piano wire sticking out. Um, and that was intentional. I left them a little bit long because I knew I could always come in here and trim them up following the, the original body lines off the back of the fender there. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I've got one of my grinding wheel, cutting wheels on the end of my Dremel here, and I'm following right down along the original body lines for the rear wheel wells of this casting. And I think in the end, that's going to be really important to to hiding this repair. If your eye just kind of follows that same line down, you won't notice this as a, a patch um, or as a, an added piece. Um, the advantage on this particular casting is there's a really nice line molded into the edge of the fenders. So I just wanna use that as my reference and continue that all the way around. Now, some earlier models of this casting did actually have a full bumper on them. And when I was doing my, my reading and my research, um, I, I found models that were much thicker here at the back. Uh, other variations on this casting uh, included some models having the uh, marker tabs or slots on the doors for where to locate the decals. Um, and there's, there is some debate even as to if some of the earlier model, models even had door decals. Uh, most of the ones that I have seen, um, both in private collections and reference materials, um, have them. But there are a couple of collectors out there that have uh, more than one of these models in original condition that do not have door decals on them. Um, but the, the casting that we have here does have the markers on the doors, so I'm assuming that uh, this has always had, or at one time did have, door decals. Um, to shape the back end here, I'm using just one of my little sanding boards, nail file, nothing, nothing too crazy or special, um, and the same deal, just following the body lines at the rear of the casting to uh, get it to look as, as close to original as we can.
with our repair complete and it appears to be holding, uh, I've gone ahead and stripped off all the original paint that was remnant on the, the upper casting here. Um, and you can see this, this casting is not in bad shape overall. Um, and I think that that repair with that little piece of piano wire um, is really going to do a good job of holding in. I also really like that the line and the thickness of it kind of flows right up into the fenders um, and looks about as original as I think I'm going to get. The base on this casting actually has quite a few different issues that we need to address. The first is obvious uh, that you can see these original axles are very, very bent. And I think that probably is one of the contributing factors to why this model was sort of sitting cattywampus when we first found it. Now, typically I like to retain the original axles, if at all possible. Um, on these crimped style, uh, I like to just use my needle nose pliers and do a cross crimp on them to squeeze that back down so it's, it's more of a square and usually that will allow me to slide the original wheels off and uh, disassemble the, the model. In this particular case, uh, I've got one other issue, and that is that these axles are really, really rusted. And when the, the metal rusts, it expands. And what has happened with this base piece is the, the steel axles have rusted and expanded inside of the original plastic wheels. So even uh, dealing with the, the crimp, um, when I pull on those wheels, they are not wanting to come off. And so uh, I think the best method for uh, something like this is going to be to just clip these axles, uh, just cut through them, and I will make new replacement axles for this. With our wheels and axles removed, I can now focus uh, my attention on this base. Base overall is not in bad shape. Um, it is a little bit bent. Uh, I think someone may have stepped on this model previously. Um, but when we look at the, the base, you can see there's a little bit of a bow in the middle there. And I noticed on one end um, that the, the tab was sort of bent down. Now, Usually, if it's a significant bend, I want to apply a little heat to it in order to get uh, a better end result. This is not a, a terrible bend. It's not way out of alignment. So I think just a little gentle persuasion with my needle nose pliers can bend some of those tabs and things back into place. Uh, then we'll get it stripped and we'll be ready to paint. For the main body color on this model, uh, I really it took some doing to try to get the, the color just right. Um, I wanted to come as close to the original green as I could. And uh, it's sort of a pale green color. And so I find that usually the best way to uh, narrow in on those colors is to start with a white base. And so I'm, I'm using uh, my testers gloss white as a, a starting point and want to put most of that in and then just slowly add a couple of drops um, using the the flat green and I needed just a drop or two of the gloss black or semi gloss black so uh, I got really close with those but I also ended up adding just a couple of drops of I think this is lime is the the tester's color so it, it took a, a fair amount of mixing uh, a lot longer than i have to to show on a typical video but i do think i've i've gotten the original color awfully close on this model so we're going to go ahead and shoot our first light tack coat on this and see how it comes out
Now, because this color was so hard to mix and I ended up using a lot of paint uh, to get it dialed in just the right shade, um, I had quite a bit left over. And so one of the things I like to do when I have leftover paint is to clean out some of my empty uh, testers bottles, my little glass bottles here. And that allows me to store uh, any leftovers so I can use it again in the future if I ever have uh, the same model or something similar to this. So that's what I've gone and done here. Um, you can see these bottles with a little thinner clean up really nice. And so I don't waste any of that leftover paint and I've got pre-mixed ready to go for another model in the future. So you can see our main casting. Uh, this turned out really, really nice. Ended up with uh, about three coats on it. For the base, I used uh, Marty's little uh, secret method of just a, a rattle can on that. And that really came out very close to the original. Uh, so now I can turn my attention to the replacement axles on this model. So to start, I want to use my original axles that I clipped off as sort of a guide or a, a measure for how long my replacement axles need to be. So I can kind of line them up on my work mat here and get a pretty good gauge for how long my new axle needs to be. For the axles themselves, I'm going to try these small wire brad nails. Um, I picked these up at the hardware store. I think it was a buck or so for the entire box of them. And there's probably more nails in here than I will ever need. Um, but the, the size of the head on the nail is very close to what the original axles are. And they're definitely long enough. So all I need to do is line them up with my original axles and then trim them to length with a pair of side cutters. I also wanted to double check um, that these will fit in my original wheels. And I've had those soaking in some vinegar just to get some of the rust off of them. But uh, I think this is gonna be a pretty good fit and a very close match to our original axles. With our new axles cut to length, the only thing left to do is to clean up our wheels and get the wheels and axles reassembled onto our base. So we're gonna get all the last residual, of the, the vinegar off. Um, that was important because there was quite a bit of rust from the axles that had transferred over onto the plastic. And the vinegar is not going to hurt the plastic at all, but it will dissolve any of that rust that's on the surface. So uh, I definitely want to do a quick once over on these just to make sure that they're nice and clean. As you can see there is a little bit of dirt and crud down in some of the cracks in here. And uh, definitely want to get them cleaned up before we put it back together and make sure that um, I do. I always try to do a little bit of a sort to find sort of the good side of a wheel to make sure that all my good sides go out. Um, in order to clean up some of the crud down in the crack, I'm using some of my dental picks. Um, you see me use these in other videos, and I've got a link to where I ordered my first set uh, from Amazon. But uh, another tip is always talk to your dentist. Uh, they have to, to change out the tools periodically. They order new tools, um, and they they always have at least a couple of spare sets sitting around. And if you're really polite and uh, ask nicely, um, usually they'll let you 
have a, a couple of those older sets. I always offer to pay for them, but uh, my dentist, <laughs> with the amount of money that I've given him, uh, has never asked me to, to pay for my tools. So that's a, a nice little tip. Um, the, the pro tools definitely, I mean, the, the tools from the dentist are definitely a, a harder uh, type of metal, and the tips do not bend as easily as the cheap sets that you can find on Amazon. Um, and so sometimes I actually like the cheaper sets because I, I know that I can do less damage with them to a casting, but for some of the real stubborn stuck-on paint, the, the Pro Tools are, are definitely a better go at it. So with all of our wheels cleaned up here, it's time to start reassembly. And all I'm going to do is just slide them down on the axle, put the axles back on my base, and then I'm going to use the exact same method as what was used originally, and that is to just crimp the axle ends. So I'm going to try to use just my needle nose pliers. Um, I've never worked with these nails or, or done a replacement axle before, so I'm not really sure how hard the metal's going to be and if I can do it with the needle nose or if I'm going to need a pair of vice grips. Um, yeah, definitely going to need the vice grips for this one. So I uh, took this down to my shop and got a, a larger pair of my uh, fine point vice grips and was able to crimp down those axles uh, pretty close to the original. Um, I did leave the axles a little bit long to start, and that was intentional. I knew I would probably need to trim them up, and just a, a couple seconds on the edge of my Dremel grinding wheel was able to fix that. So with the base all reassembled, uh, the only thing is that's left here is to add the decals and put the model back together. Now you remember the, the back end of this model where that tab fits uh, was all broken out and that was part of our original repair. So I wanna be really, really careful when I feed that tab back into the slot that I don't overdo it. Um, and then the last thing we need is just to put in our little two millimeter hex head screw and that will complete our reassembly for this model. Um, I did leave the screw silver. Uh, I'm finding that more and more of these restos that I do, I'm okay with it being a restoration or looking like a restoration. Uh, I'm never gonna pass it off as an original. So to me, the, the color of the screw doesn't really uh, matter as much anymore. But uh, that's going to do it for our paint up. Uh, the only thing we have left now is our decals. So for the decals, uh, this is actually the part of the restoration that took the longest because I thought I had a set of these original Singer decals. And when I went through my stash to try to find them, uh, I could not find a set. So I don't know if I thought I ordered them and I just... Uh, never did or, or what, but I uh, ordered these from modelcarparts.com and I believe they're based in the Netherlands and I've been really, really happy with the decals that I've gotten from them. They are as close to the originals as I've been able to find amongst any of the, the reproduction suppliers that are out there. And these are just the, uh, the transfer only. They dissolve all the rest of the background around them. So you end up with a little bit of paper around the outside uh, that gives you something to grip onto. Um, very, very easy to work with. And I've had really outstanding results with these. So I'm gonna get these trimmed up and ready to go onto the model. I've got a, a little bit of uh, just lukewarm water in a dish and once these are all trimmed we'll get them soaking and get them applied
Of course, the hardest part of doing decals is never doing the first one. It's always doing the second one and making it match the first one. I also uh, had to be really careful with these. If you look very closely, there is text within the S, and the S is the same uh, upside down or right side up, but the text within it is not. So um, I almost put the first one on upside down and uh, caught myself. So got these the right way round, and using the, the guide marks on the original casting was able to line up both sides so they matched. And that's going to do it for the decals on this. Uh, you might notice I also, off camera, uh, did a quick little paint in of the headlights, grill, and bumpers on this. Uh, just used a little of my aluminum paint from Testers. I found it's been a pretty good match to the silver. And then I touched up the, the screw on the bottom just so it matches the base. So as a reminder, uh, this is the casting that I started with. Uh, you can see the, the base was bent, which caused it to sit sort of cattywampus, and nearly all of the original paint was, was missing, as well as all of the decals. So this is exactly the, the type of model that I like to do restorations on, because there's no redeeming qualities left of the original piece, and uh, it's been play-worn to a point where uh, the, the best thing really for it is to do a restoration. And... Without further ado, here's what our model looks like today. This was really a, a fun little resto for me. Um, it's such a, a neat casting, has so much character, and to bring this one back from the dead was, was really uh, rewarding. Um, I really enjoyed all the, the little details on this. The headlights and grill on this particular casting, I think, are some of the best uh, in all the, the different castings as far as the details go. And this one really just came out a, a nice little gem for my collection. Uh, really happy with the paint on this as well. Uh, it was kind of an ordeal to get that green color match just right, but uh, I, I think I nailed it. And I've got enough left over that, you know, if I find another one of these down the road, um, it's an easy, easy repaint at that point. Um, the wheels and axles really turned out nice. This is my first attempt at doing replacement axles. And now that I've found the right size and nail and everything to do that, um, and they came out so nice, that's not something I'm going to be scared of doing in the future. Uh, so I, I've tended to always try to use original parts wherever possible. But again, this one was so far gone, I, I don't feel bad about replacing those axles at all. So let me know what you think of this one. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like down below. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. I do try to, to read and respond to every comment on, on my videos. And uh, as always, click that subscribe button so you can keep up with this and all of our future restorations. Join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.